Hello everyone and welcome to the GMS Magazine RPG Reviews. In this episode, we bring you a review of the Crypt of the Science Wizard for 5e from Skeeter Green Productions. Uh, the following review has been written by Inside Geist. For more reviews like this, please visit his website at insidegeist.com and please support his Patreon. The address is in the show notes as well as on the top left corner if you are watching this in our YouTube channel rather than listening in our podcast. The first publication of Skeeter Green publishing clocks in at 44 pages. One is for the front cover, one is inside the front cover, one is editorial, there is one for SRD, one page for advertising and one page for the back cover which leaves us with 38 pages of content. So, let's take a look. By the way, this review was moved up in the reviewing queue due to uh, Tilo receiving a print copy in exchange of a fair and unbiased review. He's consulted both the PDF and the print version for the review. So, let's start with the first thing that you'll notice upon opening the module. The covers are sturdy and detachable and hold a massive map of the main adventure area. And uh, before you ask, the electronic iteration does feature a full-color, player-friendly iteration as well as a graphic of the somewhat isometric overland map. These two for once in my life are actually components, though, which, while helpful, do not account for my eternal cries for player-friendly material. Oh no, yeah, I kinda got what I usually complain incessantly about, but guess what? The module goes a step further. The soft cover saddle stitched module with its delightfully old schooly detachable cover, well it comes with something that should have been standard for years but it isn't. A separate booklet. This booklet is 6 by 9 inches, it's an A5 size and it shows regions and rooms found in the module from a parchment or treasure map to a sea hiding a barely but clearly visible entrance to a complex, to a hallway with walled studies with hieroglyphs and strange pictograms. The module takes one of the best pages out of Goodman Games' playbook and escalates it into the level that I wanted to see. Yeah, you heard it right. A 20 pages handout booklet for the players. So, this booklet is where a lot of the module's budget went. Its artwork is far superior to the authors within the book itself. But guess what? That is exactly how it should freaking be. The handouts. Look, everyone at the table gets to see them. What well, well, good is a gorgeous, beautiful map if only the GM gets to see it. What well, good is a lavish, fight scene depicting some icons instead of the PCs. What good is an assassination scene that the PCs won't witness and that spoils the mystery of an investigation? Bingo! This module for once prioritizes where its art budget should go correctly, providing cool artwork where it is seen. That's huge kudos! If anything, other publishers should take a careful look at this module just for that reason alone. Anyhow, where was I? Uh, so, this is the first of the Tales of the Black Tower, but the module very much is a standalone, offering, uh, you know, you'll have no more annoying dangling plot threads than in any other adventure, as in enough to hook in the next module in a wide variety of ways, and enough to run this as a standalone should you so desire. No merely, the module is recommended for a third level characters, but is designated as a difficult adventure. This difficulty, just so you know, stems from how it challenges the players. Veterans may tackle this as soon as first level, provided the GM tones down the combat encounters just a bit. Uh, and much like in my previous comparison with Goodman Games, DCC module, I would actually consider this in aesthetics close to them. This is a pulp fantasy exploration that values player skill over character skill. Save or die scenarios are absent, 
but the module is still deadly. In short, it is a hard module, but it remains really fair in its difficulty. The, the adventure features boxes of read aloud text and sidebars, called behind the scenes, behind the GM screen, and the further elaborate on the proceedings within. Random encounters, where applicable, are slightly more detailed than usual, featuring brief descriptions as well as the relevant stats. References to stats or sections have been bolded in the text and proper formatting has been implemented, making the parsing of the adventure information very reliable. Now, if you are a 5e GM, the chances are that you've at one time taken a chance with a 5e module converted from an OSR mode of rules. There is an excellent chance that the result was not pleasant. There are plenty of OSR authors playing a kind of pseudo 5e, one that works at their table, but one that also does not, not even closely work in proper 5e games. There is often lack of understanding regarding rules and the intricacies of the system on display that is, it really is absolutely aggravating. Yeah, well, this is not the case here. I think none at all. This is a proper 5e adventure. The author obviously knows the game. He's played it and has actually analyzed how it works. The rules conventions are in place. The execution is excellent. Ability checks are what they are supposed to be. Saving throws make sense. Damage types are correctly implemented and the same goes for conditions. There is one instance where boiling water has no type of damage. And the names of features or actions of the new monsters, the melee ranged weapon attacks and hits are not properly depicted in italics. But um, that's a purely cosmetic issue. You know, saves, skills, passive perception are correct. And I love this. There's another aspect to these modules, 5e iteration, that I feel I need to mention. But that ties uh, into the spoiler section below. So for now, rest assured that you actually get a proper 5e adventure here and not some minimum effort hack job of a conversion. It should also be noted that the module has an implicit setting that can easily be adapted to desert or wasteland environments, including wilderness or random encounter tables, but which has a distinct Mesopotamian slant. While it is easy enough to get rid of this flavor component, I would genuinely suggest not doing so, for in my opinion it adds to the unique flavor of the adventure. All right. This is as far as we can go without diving into spoilers. Potential players should you know, jump ahead into their conclusion. Okay? You're jumping ahead, right? No, only GMs around? Great, okay, so uh, we begin with a scroll that feels like it has been taken out of the Nemedian Chronicles within the yarn of a mighty god emperor wizard Kerset, and the vengeance the entity has brought upon partially successful insurgencies. Kerset may not be active in the world right now, but the mighty being remains unconquered and indeed both in nomenclature and in the way all of this background story is conveyed, we have distinct impressions of a twist on the Gilgamesh epic save that we have an excerpt from a chronicle of an antithesis of the myth of a deadly being. The module presents essentially the entrance to the Black Tower where Kerset lairs, but unlike many modules that are parts of series, it is a feature complete experience sans dangling threads, should you choose to run it you know, right now. Structurally, the module makes a whole bunch of daring decisions that I love seeing. For one, there is a pretty good chance that the players may not even find the proper finale. False treasure rooms and ends are included, and indeed, unless your players are really smart, 
they may not even find the potential entrance to the Black Tower or the Modulus' boss encounter. Combat. Paris once inside the complex though, and indeed the primary focus lies in traps and creative problem solving. It is my utmost delight to note that there is not a single sucky invisible line trap here. This adventure employs the best trap design I have seen all year regardless of system. Heck it ranges among the best adventures out there in that regard, period. You see, not only are the traps clever, they can't be simply disarmed with a roll of the dice. The module expects the party to act in a small, you know, cluster, and the traps make sense. There is a thorough commitment to making the complex making sense. There is, for example, a checkered floor, obviously trapped, that sports a time waster of sorts and a deadly gas. This gas is delivered in sequence of sorts, with uh, only the final one being lethal, and even then allowing the party enough time to rescue their compatriots. Can the TPK the party? Well, yes, absolutely, but that would be a very deserved loss. One of my favorites is a kind of moving thin ledge that needs to be traversed. It's made of flint, and it creates rains of sparks that ignite essentially what's a kerosene-like fuel in the pit below. It can be jammed, using tricky manners, heck, even weaponized by smart parties. It is very hard to describe just how meticulously the module sticks to the paradigm of providing a fair but a thoroughly challenging dungeon for people who want out more of the game than rolling to hit, though that's included in as well. It took me a while to fully appreciate how intricately and well-designed the whole complex is, how it systematically emphasizes being smart over dice rolls, and how it uses hand the handout booklet and the depictions there to further create these challenges and portray them in a fair manner. There in the back isn't that uh, impelled skeletons? As the party ventures down the corridor, they get another handout that shows the scene in more detail. And attentive players really do get an edge in the exploration of the tomb. And this is where we get back to 5e and how it influences this module as a system. You probably know that most 5e groups won't be as accustomed to the old school playstyle and it's focused on problem solution and role playing over simply rolling checks, right? The module does something ingenious. It uses checks, rolling the dice, as essentially a hint system. This is elegant and genius in several ways. It slightly decreases the difficulty of the module for an audience not accustomed to the play style. And uh, at the same time, it rewards the players for using the tools at their disposal. The system imminent options they have. This is sheer genius, and I love it. One could argue that the 5e version is actually more of a design achievement than the OSR version already is. I know, right? How often does that happen? Mm, not very. Interesting would also be another aspect, though this might be primarily a thing that GMs notice. There is this old dash that stipulates that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Well, guess what? That's kind of the leitmotif here. From the player's side of things, the dungeon can feel very much like a magical dungeon with some oddities. From a GM's perspective, we see the purpose of all, the intricate commitment to detail and intelligence notions. Yes, this is pulpy, but it's up to you how and whether you would emphasize these components and the party won't end the exploration with some anachronistic blaster rifles. In fact, in many ways, the party is cast in the roles of, for example, Conan and similar heroes facing things beyond their comprehension. If you have followed my reviews, you will know that my comparisons with my beloved Barbarian 
are reserved to adventurers and supplements that really do a good job of capturing this ephemeral atmosphere. All of the tropes make sense, and there is not a single a wizard did it moment. The module can be mean, tough and brutal, but it always remains fair and retains a perfect commitment to plausibility. You know, we have a constant, almost obsessive commitment to excellence and foresight regarding everything from how the handouts are implemented to how it teaches what sets it apart from other modules. You've heard me gush about, you know, Harley's trough DCC modules, for instance, and how they work. It could be claimed that this adventure goes a similar route, but teaches the players from the get-go how to role-play the problem solutions required in the adventure from the onset. What do I mean by that? Well, there is, for example, a kind of storage room that contains various tools that can be helpful. The presence makes sense. Removing plaster from the walls, you know, that might actually be a good idea here. This dungeon wants you to engage with it and not just consider the walls to be textures just like in a computer game. This notion is driven home from the get-go, from the crypt is at the bottom of an oasis lake. Opening the crypt would mean that the party has to wait until the water has drained. They will also have destroyed, you know, an oasis in the wastelands. Choice? Consequence. Reading all the caps letters uh, right now, right there. And you know what? They might well accidentally create a sand water sludge for a moment. This is essentially a safe zone tutorial that does not, not for a second, feel like one. Instead, you genuinely feel a clever, be like people exploring an ancient place of wonders. And honestly, I could go through the module, trap by trap, encounter by encounter, but I would be doing it a disservice. Conclusion. Um, editing and formatting are slightly less impressive than in the OSR version. As noted on a formal level, we have a few instances where things are not italicized properly. It is still very good though, and its use of 5e rules is excellent. Layout adheres to a two-column, full-color standard. The artworks are okay for adventurous scenes, but the budget has obviously gone where it should, into the massive handout booklet. That's, you know, that's just plain amazing. The electronic version comes with player's maps, etc. and the cartography for the region is full color and the VTT compatible player's map, which features no secrets, doors or spoilers, black and white for the handouts. The handouts even include a treasure map to the oasis that jumpstarts the adventure. The physical version is amazing, capturing the old school vibe with its wraparound cover and booklet perfectly. The PDF comes fully bookmarked with detailed nested bookmarks, making it using a joy. Still, for the handout booklets alone, I would seriously recommend getting that version if you possibly can. I first read material by Skeeter Green when he contributed material to the Pathfinder RPG version of Rapang Athuk, crafting some of my favorite parts of the Mega Dungeon. I knew he was no novice, and I had high expectations. When I have high expectations for anything, I usually end up disappointed. This holds doubly true for 5e conversions, which often, to put it in plain English, they suck. Oh boy. I was not prepared for this. From the support and inclusion of all the formal things that you expect from player maps to bookmarks to all the other things so many publishers forget, the formal criteria here are pitch perfect. And you know, they form a glorious unity with the handout booklet, which is not just an optimal gimmick, but something that is brilliantly interwoven with the complexes, 
meticulously executed design. Both writing and design are fantastic here, and the singularity of vision of a capital letters role playing adventure that rewards and teaches clever problem solutions. The use of IVs as more expansive rules options as a type of hint system not only is smart, it also contextualizes the module's play style within the system and adapts it to a supremely smart manner. It took me ages to properly grasp why I adored this module to this extent. It took analysis. In a way, this module reminds me of some of the best authors out there. Much like Richard Devlin's superb $4 dungeon modules, seriously, even if you play OSR games and not Pathfinder, just get them, there is a commitment to a distinctly novel vision and an expert implementation of it that is frankly outstanding. Much like Harley Stroth's DCC works, there is a commitment to atmosphere and challenge and plausibility here. One that you may not consciously notice at first, but which suffuses everything. This is not murder hoboing 101. There are plenty of good and bad old school modules that cater to this playstyle. If you want more from your modules though, yeah, well then get this right now. This is all about creating a consistent illusion of the experience of delving into a wondrous and weird complex. It's an ephemeral theme that it suffuses pretty much the entire genre, but you know what? This adventure made me realize how bad a ton of the modules we regularly consume actually are. How artificial, how flat. If anything, this is one of those standout adventures that designers should take a close look at, that GMs should process and run. This is, in short, a masterpiece, and one that manages to attain its excellence without over-the-top flourishes, shock value, or any of the other things that make it easy to sell you on a book. The module proposes a simple question. Do you need all of that? Doesn't exploring a creative, smart complex with weirdness and challenges galore suffice? It turns out that it does, at least when executed this well. In many ways, this old school in a way that puts many modules of both old and new school to shame. It has learned from the past, retained core values and expanded upon them, injecting new components to enhance the experience. You would be asking, do I have any complaints? Well, yeah, yeah, I want more. Like we need more modules of this quality. To get back to 5e once more, I actually prefer the 5e version over the OSR version. Structurally, it is even more clever than the old school iteration in its teaching by showing approach married to a new school system usage. This is one of the modules that I will be referencing in my reviews for years to come. My final verdict will be five stars plus a seal of approval, and this receives a nomination for my top 10 of 2019. If you have the luxury of choice, I would actually recommend getting the 5 version. Hence I guys out. Thank you very much indeed for watching and listening. If you have enjoyed this, please uh, leave a comment in the video section in YouTube or leave us a review in iTunes, which is truly and genuinely appreciated. And remember to subscribe to either the podcast or the channel. Thank you once again for being there. And until the next time, I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care.